and welcome to Down to Earth. I'm Daphne Richards. This week's question comes from Diane. She has a firecracker fern in a pot and it's covered with some sort of vine with tiny white flowers. She wondered if this were part of the plant or something she should be worried about. Well, it's definitely not part of the plant and it is something to be worried about, but really not too much. The stringy, spaghetti-looking mess covering her beautiful firecracker fern is actually a parasite plant called daughter. Daughter invades the tissue of the host plant and steals its nutrients to grow. It has very little chlorophyll, so it's usually not green. It can range in color, though, from pale whitish brown to bright orange, even. And when you first see it, you'll wonder if someone hasn't covered your plants in silly string. This plant does flower and produces a prolific number of seeds, so you should remove it immediately and throw it away before those seeds have a chance to spread. Once you have seen the plant, keep an eye out for it around your yard and pull out fresh seedlings as soon as you see them growing on any of your plants. In this situation, I would suggest first removing all of the daughter from the container and also remove any plant parts that the daughter is attached to. Those have already been invaded and daughter will grow back from them. If you notice that the daughter grows back, I would suggest going ahead and tossing the whole container and getting a new firecracker fern, unfortunately. There's no recommended chemical control for daughter in this situation, so don't use any herbicides or fungicides. Although the plant seems like an alien from outer space, it's actually pretty easy to control with good cultural practices, ripping it up and tossing it out. I bet this one came in with the plant when it was originally purchased. But as long as you get rid of the parasite before the seeds spread around, there shouldn't be any future flare-ups. This week's plant is our native Texas poinsettia, Euphorbia cyathophora. It's also known as fire on the mountain. This small spreading plant does indeed resemble its showier relative, the Christmas poinsettia, with those striking reddish-orange colored bracts beneath the much less showy small ripe flowers. This plant generally stays 18 to 24 inches tall, but can get taller, especially if it's planted in deep shade because it will be stretching for more light. I was truly amazed by these native poinsettias in our demonstration garden during this summer's record-breaking heat and drought. With only one irrigation per week, the plants looked fabulous all summer long. They did get a little wilty in the afternoon, but were always perked up by morning. Wild poinsettias are not picky about their soil type or their pH, so they should do well in most any central Texas landscape, from heavy clay to rocky limestone. Although they're listed for full sun, I've found that they're pretty happy in bright filtered light. They'll also spread at least a foot wide after you've planted them, so don't put them too close together. They flower from late summer through fall and they're annuals, so they will come back in your garden next year from seed. The leaves have an interesting pointy shape and the orange coloring on the bracts look like arrows, pointing out to insect pollinators just exactly where those inconspicuous little flowers are. As with most natives, fertilizer is not required and generally not recommended. Native poinsettias spread by seeds and by clumping, but they really aren't invasive in the landscape. A few people have remarked to me that they decided they didn't want it anymore, but it still came back even after they pulled it out. So be careful where you put it. But be assured that it will come back year after year in even the worst conditions. It's listed as hardy to zone four, which is negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit. So it also won't have any trouble surviving our winters and it actually may be perennial for us even though it's listed as an annual on the tag. To do in your garden this week, if you're planning for a winter vegetable garden, it's time to plant carrots, chard, and turnips and also a great time to plant some cool season herbs like borage, fennel, parsley, and chamomile. We'd love to hear from you. Please visit klru.org to send us your questions or plants of the week from your garden. Mm -hmm.